Hello and welcome! I'm Joanna Yunak and this is GFN News on GFN.tv. Vaping regulations in Brazil are still evolving. Consequently, there are many questions regarding the legality and accessibility of vaping products. Let's check how the new regulations are currently being interpreted in Brazil. Joining us today to update us on the situation in Brazil is Alexandro Lucian, a journalist, specialist researcher in THR and president of Gireta, a non-governmental consumers organization focused on tobacco harm reduction. Hello, Alexandro. Due to these new regulations in Brazil, some people are having difficulties with the interpretation of vaping policy. Can you please explain to us what has recently happened in Brazil because of these changes? Of course, uh, because Anvisa uh, prohibited vaping uh, commerce, advertising and importation since 2009, but they never uh, prohibited uh, things like uh, manufacturing uh, and it was a flawed law. So it, in the past, uh, I don't know, four years, five years, they were discussing about uh, updating this, this regulation. And this year, they updated, unfortunately, uh, maintaining the ban. <clears throat> but we think that they did a very poor job because the text they used, the words, the phrases they used was not exactly... Um, it was open for interpretation. So they included words like transportation and storage of, of vaping devices and vaping products without telling specifically that was for commerce purposes. So this made ANAC, which is the agency that controls uh, all the flight travels in Brazil, to understand that the transportation was also included to the persons, to the users, to the consumers. So they updated they, they, their regulation in their website, uh, stating that vaping devices could not be transported in any domestic flight in Brazil. When we saw that, we as consumers and myself as president of Gireta, which is an organization representing consumers, vaping consumers in Brazil, we reach out to ANEC asking them why they were banning uh, vaping devices since it was not what Anvisa or regulate, regulatory agency was intending to do. And then after some pressure, some letters we sent, they reach out to Anvisa. So ANEC uh, speak, spoke to Anvisa about it. And a few, I think two or three months the, um, after the banning, they changed their minds. And now we are as we should be. So transportation on vaping devices are allowed, domestic flights, and you can even um, go out of Brazil, go to any country in the world, but you cannot come back with vaping devices. The importation of vape devices are still banned. This was specifically put in the new regulation of Anvisa. So any importation whatsoever, even if it's not for commerce, just for your personal use is forbidden. So if you try to enter Brazil coming from England, Canada, or any other country, despite the, this count, this, these countries having regulations and permitting the sales of vaping devices, you cannot enter Brazil. And if they find your device, they will confiscate it. And can you tell us about Bill 5008 and what measures it proposes regarding the regulation of vaping products? We have a bill uh, 5008 uh, from Senator Soraya Tronik. This bill was introduced in the uh, end of last year, 
and several actions were already taken up for for example some public hearings and uh, some commissions but the way things will work in Brazil every bill must pass several steps before it becomes active so right now we have to pass three commissions and this bill is only in the first commission and because of a lot of things happening even because one once one bill is being discussed it doesn't mean that it's going to be voted because you have uh, some senators that want to take a closer look to this bill so a, another 30 days must pass and then they have on other um other bills to, to there is more urgent they have to to discuss so this bill goes in a secondary position and then so and so on and so on we ha also have elections right now for mayors and uh, city elections everywhere in brazil so we have right now a moment of standby to wait for this these elections to to pass and then this subject subject is going to be discussed again there is a lot of um resistance there is a lot of uh, senators that are not um supporting this bill there's a lot of other senators there are the consumers are supporting this bill because the what this bill wants is to regulate similarly like uh, cigarettes in the um, in the meaning that it's going to be regulated the substances used in the manufacturing it's go it's ha it must be registered in um, visa and compared it with toxicological reports with the cigarette and shows it's uh, less harmful you have the possibility to have uh, devices that are sold only for adults you don't allow uh, advertisement you prove uh, you put some heavy fines to wh whoever tries to sell to minors and some other uh, rules that we need because right now in Brazil we have absolutely no rules whatsoever about uh, vaping commerce in the country. And last question to you, Alexandra. There's an important new agency in Brazil that we've heard about. What is it? We have an agency called uh, Federal Revenue, which is like the IRS in the America. It's like the it's an agency that controls taxes, customs, everything in Brazil. And the fe federal revenue of Brazil is the are those responsible for um, fiscalization and for uh, seizing products that are cont contrabanded in Brazil. Everything from cell phones and counterfeited products and also vaping devices. This agency, the chief of this agency, uh, went in a meeting with Anvisa saying that the federal revenue of Brazil cannot and it's unable to uh, properly make fiscalizations of vaping devices in Brazil. They told Anvisa that it's impossible to control the all the contraband that enters Brazil and a regulation should happen if we wanted to protect uh, the consumers and also all the society in Brazil. The numbers they show is about uh, 10, 10 million, million dollars every year since uh, 2022. So in 2022, we had 50 millions of reais in products, which stands at, uh, almost for 10 million dollars, just of products that were uh, confiscated. In 2000, 2023, we had another uh, 10 million dollars, even more. And we have so twenty million dollars in the last two years of confiscated products, and the federal revenue told them Visa that they think this is only ten percent of the products that actually enters Brazil. Since the people doesn't understand that vaping is prohibited, there is no understanding of uh, the prohibition of those products it's impossible in these were the words of the federal revenue of brazil it's impossible to properly 
um, make a fiscalization, make a, a, an effort to stop the contraband in Brazil. So they uh, asked Anvisa to, to think about some kind of regulation so they could uh, make um, their job much easy, e easier and also possible. So this is very important because we see one of the most important agencies in Brazil that controls everything we do like taxes and everything we buy we pay taxes and they control everything uh, is saying to Anvisa that is impossible to control the contraband in Brazil since it's so big and so already and everywhere in Brazil. Thank you Alexandra. That's all for today. Tune in next time here on GFN TV or on our podcast. You can also find transcriptions of each episode on the GFN TV website. Thanks for watching or listening. See you next time.